Hello friends, my name is Funny Ness and today I have a book haul for you, which I think this is the one and only book haul that I've done all year. In years past I've been a lot more strict with myself with my book buying rules, but I'm still pretty good about them. Basically I don't like to buy books if I haven't read them, especially physical copies of books. I will buy ebooks that I haven't read for the purpose of reading them because I don't feel the same sense of like taking up space that I do with buying physical books that I haven't read and then if I read read them and I don't like them then I have this thing like a physical thing that I need to get rid of so I try not to do that my collection is for the most part a collection of things that I either think are very pretty and are decorative or things that I've read and love. Now there are a lot more unread books on my shelves these days than in previous years. Part of that is books that I've picked up from events and publishers, gifts I've gotten from people within the book community. Book of the Month has played a really big part in that. Book of the Month doesn't bother me that much because for the most part when I'm getting books from Book of the Month they've been three stars or above. There, I think there's yet to be one that I've gotten and read and hated. I am trying to like I will skip more months now because I have this like whole side that you guys can't see that it's basically all Book of the Month books but I just love it so much. So the ratio is getting a little bit away from me. All of that rambling to say that I typically don't buy books, physical books, enough to justify haul. I went out today to Barnes and Noble and I bought a bunch of books. Nobody ever buys me books for Christmas. There's one exception that I will share with you but I don't get books for Christmas from my family or anything like that because they're just like no like why why do you need more books so I went out and I bought myself some books and while I was in the store I thought it would be fun to ask people on Twitter for some prompts to help direct what books that I would bring home I got more prompts than I could handle I, I couldn't do them all one because I just thought of it when I went to the store and I wasn't gonna like stay at the store all day and two because I had a budget <laughs> I wasn't gonna break the bank and buy a book for every single thing that someone tweeted at me but I had a ton of fun so I'm going to save some of the the suggestions and maybe hopefully do it again something like this again it probably isn't necessary but I just want to give a little bit of a disclaimer and say that I know all the conversation that goes around consumerism and booktube and all of that jazz I work very hard for all of the discretionary income that I have this is one of the I'm a minimalist kind of person if you see my apartment it's like pretty bare but this is one of the few things that I love to have and collect so a reminder to everybody watching and enjoying this that you don't need to own books to be a reader. The majority of books that I read are from the library and I love my public library and you don't need a books or a collection in order to be a booktuber. Keep all of that in mind during today's haul. First I want to share the two books that I actually got as presents for Christmas and every year my friends and I, so the group of friends that it's like Lainey and Connor and Sam and Paige and George and Kayla. I hope I got them all. We've been to so many events together and usually share a room so we have a group chat that we just talk to each other pretty much every day in and we always do a gift exchange. So this year Connor got me and he sent me these two books. The first is The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart and I have read this and it is an adorable and fun middle grade book. It's about a school for gifted children but there's something nefarious going on at the school. So these children get sent in kind of on a secret mission to discover what's going on. I didn't have the physical copy because I got this from the library, the ebook and the audiobook version. The audiobook was amazing and so much fun to listen to. This is just like a romp of a book and it's got a cute little found family at the heart of it. It also features a character that I, I think it's like the biggest 180 I've ever done on a character before and I can't tell you why because it's a spoiler but I hated this character at the beginning and by the end when you figure everything out and all is said and done just in my feelings like no other precious precious little cinnamon roll 
perfection. This is a great book for easy reading, adventure, solid middle grade, found family, and just a good time. The second book he sent was The Refrigerator Monologues by Catherine M. Valente. Catherine M. Valente is the author of one of my favorite series of all times, the Fairyland series. I've read that series, Space Opera, this book. Um, I think those are all of them. I tried Deathless earlier this year and it's super dense. Like I did, I read, I don't know how many pages and I did not understand one word of what I was reading. I don't know if it was me, the mood or whatever, but I need to like focus on that book. And she has a couple others that I'm interested in eventually getting to. But anyways, I read this one and it is a collection of stories told from the perspective of women in superhero stories that are often like the bystanders or the women who are fridged or sacrificed in the hero story. Basically, they're all in hell and they form this club and they're telling their stories. So this is snarky and wonderful and I enjoyed it a lot. It's it's probably best if you have some working knowledge of hero stories. I don't have a ton, like I love superhero stories, but you know, they're, they're very vast worlds and you need a lot of knowledge. But even with like basic knowledge of heroes, there are references in this to stories that you're probably familiar with and the references are part of the fun. It's definitely a book that I would love to reread, which is part of why I want to own it, but because of that, because it is very reference heavy. It's her typical super flowery, lots of words jam-packed into a very small little space kind of book and that makes it all the more fun for rereading and picking apart and seeing what you get from it every time you revisit. Okay, so on to the books that I just bought literally a few minutes ago. The first prompt on Twitter was from Wild Book Garden and she said I should get a book I've almost bought more than once. For this I went with this version of The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. I don't own any copies of this story. I, I mean I think I have ebook copies. Maybe I actually got them from the library. I don't remember but I don't have a physical copy. The copy that I, the copies that I really really want are from Folio Society and I think the entire all of it together is over $200. So I haven't been able to save enough or justify the cost and I, I can't, I like $200, I mean they're beautiful, they would probably be worth it but. So I got this Bible looking one, it was the one that appealed to me the most. There aren't very many pretty covers or collections for Lord of the Rings but I didn't mind this one, it's got nice soft cover, it is a little Bible looking but. It's all good. I have read this entire series. I've read the first book multiple times, mainly because the first time I read it, I didn't like it. And I struggled to the second part of the series and I never made it to the third. A year later, I tried again by listening to the abridged audiobook version. So it was like the production. And that helped me fall in love with the story. So then I moved on and I listened to the unabridged version. So I read the book again and then I was invested and I was able to finish the entire series. This is absolutely dense. It is, I, you know, the description of like things, trees, people, animals, it's, it's intense and it doesn't always need to be, but underneath that layer of stuff that I understand if people can't get past it, but there's just such a great adventure story with characters that have my whole heart. And I finally own a copy because thank you, Wild Book Garden. <laughs> <laughs> Next up I got two suggestions for a cover buy, one from Catherine and one from Dallas. So basically I just walked around until there was a cover that caught my eye and this cover specifically was standing in a sea of not so very bright covers and it was one of the ones that was facing out. So it totally worked on me, the marketing campaign, because I saw it and I was like, yes, this this is the one that I need. It is absolutely adorable and it is Little Big Love by Katie Regan. I know absolutely nothing about this book and I just checked Goodreads and nobody that I know has read it. The average star rating is 3.91 which is a little like, mm, but I mean, if it's like a high three for me, that's fine. It just seems like it's gonna be adorable, honestly, and heartwarming. It's about a 10 year old boy and his single mom and his deep desire to know anything about his father. His mom has not been very forthcoming about information about his father, but one day she lets slip that his father is the only man that she's ever loved. So the boy becomes obsessed with finding more about his father and reuniting him and his mother. And I think the story is told through his 
point of view, his mother's point of view, and, and his grandfather. I'm expecting to absolutely fly through this and get the warm fuzzies. And honestly, at the very least, it's just beautiful. <laughs> I just Something about the color combination just speaks to me, and it's gonna look great on my shelves. Next up, I have a prompt from at Grandpa on Twitter, and they wanted me to get a book that isn't in my comfort zone. This is always a very difficult challenge for me because I read pretty widely. This year I've read fiction and nonfiction, mystery, romance, YA, like all genres and categories. And there's obviously some that I read a lot more from. I read a lot more fantasy and literary fiction than anything else, but I'm not sure what qualifies as out of my comfort zone except for like a feeling thing. So I stood in the Barnes and Noble and basically just thought what's the section right now that I would least want to go to and I thought YA I had walked by and actually saw like the ones that were featured and Sarah J Mass was on display and I was just like Ugh, I can't even look over there so, but I made myself go back because of this prompt and then I found a book that was like double the prompt. I picked up a very large expansive sea by Tahira Mafi. This is a contemporary novel by Mafia and I only have experience reading Shatter Me by her and I hated it. I hated it so much. I hated it so much I couldn't even review it because I didn't know what to say. People were like you should love it it's super flowery and I was like no it's not flowery it just doesn't make sense. So I have deep, deep feelings against that series. Nothing against the author. I'm sure she's lovely. I've never met her. She's been at events I've been at, but I've never met her because, you know, I didn't like her book. But yeah, so this is like double out of my comfort zone. Contemporary is not something I read very often. It's YA and it's by an author whose other series I did not like. So we're going to see how this goes for me. I'm very curious about it. I'm I'm stoked about the representation. It follows a Muslim girl after the events of 9-11 and it has aspects of breakdancing in here. So I'm very interested in telling you guys how this goes and kind of seeing her writing style outside of that very specific thing that she was doing for Shatter Me, which I hated. I don't know if I mentioned that. Claudia asked me to get a book that I've been meaning to get but always put off. And one of the two prompts that I entered the bookstore with, so the original tweet that I sent out was for me to pick up a copy of a book that I loved and don't own yet. I kind of combined those two for these next books. And they are The Last Wish and Sword of Destiny by Andrzej Sapkowski. And these are the first and second books in the Witcher series, so they're the short story collections. I just told you guys that I got the first and second and then I turned around to get the third and I realized that I actually own the second already. I swore to myself that I bought the third and I was missing one and two but now I own one to two so I will return one of the twos and get three I suppose but yeah the first three in the series is what I was going for here before I messed up. I love the first two. They're short story collections that introduce you into this world and these characters. I really liked that way of like starting a series and I like them because they are at their heart what I like about the Witcher series and it's Geralt going around fighting monsters and all of these little pieces of his backstory and especially after playing the game first and then going to this everything felt like an easter egg which I know it's like reverse you know these came first and then the the video game but when you consume it in the opposite order going back to the source material has that feeling of like oh my gosh I remember this I've seen this and all of that the reason that I put off buying these as per the prompt is because I'm not a fan of the covers they had like a hardback of the latest release but not of any of the other ones I don't even know if they come in hardback so anyway the point is that I'm not like a total fan of these covers but you get what you get and you don't get upset so I'm starting to collect them and then from Pandemon 514 they wanted me to get a book that is your friend's all-time favorite so I immediately sent a message to Nicole and asked her if there's an all-time favorite of hers that I haven't read I thought of Emma by Jane Austen which I actually just read this year and the His Dark Material trilogy which I know is her favorite and I've already read and I own and so I wanted to ask her to see if there was anything missing and my phone was dying in the store so I was like freaking out that I wasn't gonna get her answer before it died 
and I wouldn't have this to add to my haul, but she answered back and she said that her favorites from like a purely emotional, nostalgic point of view are His Dark Materials and The Great Gatsby. I have never read The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is a classic that you probably know what it's about more than I do. That's kind of a lie. I know what the story is about because I've watched the adaptation with Leonardo DiCaprio. That's the extent of this for me. We didn't read it in high school, which I feel like most people do, or that's where most people get their knowledge of The Great Gatsby. It's also really great because it's a pretty short book and I'm trying to read a lot before the end of the year. So this is probably one that I'll pick up from this haul first because of its nice convenient size. Nicole had a lot of feelings about me coming to this for the first time versus her having spent since high school reading it and picking it apart and what my experience will be like, but I'm excited, especially to discuss it with her. It happened with Emma where I wasn't sure what I was feeling and after discussions with her, like it gave me a new point of view about what I was reading and how I was consuming it. So I'm excited to get to this and talk to her about it. So thank you for that lovely prompt. I, I was sitting there literally thinking of like, I couldn't even think of who my friends were or what their favorites were so I immediately text Nicole. So thank you to her for always answering my texts. And yeah, from Emily Hornberg on Twitter, she asked me to pick up a book that I thought was underhyped. So basically I just, I was still in the YA section actually, and I just looked for a book that I hadn't heard anybody talking about. That isn't to say much because my attendance on booktube has been a little touch and go this year, but I hadn't heard anybody specifically mention this book. I have looked it up on Goodreads since then and I see that two or three of my friends have actually read it, but not very many. So this is still, I feel like, underhyped. This is Buried Beneath the Baobab Tree by Adobe Trisha Walbany. This is a story about a girl, one of the school girls who was kidnapped by Boko Haram in Nigeria and it is told in these very short vignettes and they seem very poetic just from like the description on the back and I'm super excited to read through this. The final prompt was the one for myself, the other one that I made up that was in my original tweet, and it was to pick up a book that I had heard somebody talk about, somebody gush about, and I went with my sister, The Serial Killer, and I have just heard Rincy from Rincy Reads talk about this book in her Favorites of 2018 video. What she said about it being funny, but also commentary on the way that women are treated, and this idea, so the main character sister's boyfriends always end up dead, hence the my sister is a serial killer. Rinzi and I have pretty similar reading tastes, so when she says that she loves something, her entire video basically, I was like, okay, I've read that one and that one, I own that one and that one, and all of these are going on my TBR. So now I have this one based on her, gosh, and I'm super excited to read it. That's it, that's my entire haul. Merry Christmas to myself. Thank you to everyone on Twitter who sent prompts. As I said, I'm sorry I didn't get to all of them, but I will save them in case I can do something like this again. If you've read any of the books that I've picked up in my haul, let me know down in the comments. If you have any predictions about how I will find these books, let me know. I'm super curious what you guys think about what I've picked up. And I hope you all had a very happy holiday and that if you weren't gifted books, you can buy yourself some books in the near future. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. I I love the way that my videos look when I use the natural light in addition to the ring light that I now have but this is this is the this is the stuff that happens to me when look look the sun the sun is trying to come out now this is why you can't rely on natural light